When it comes to calling BS on Republican Senator Josh Hawley, I am a proud veteran. In fact, I was into it way before it was cool. Back in April of 2020, I wrote a piece for The Intercept about why the Missouri GOP lawmaker is a fraud and a faux populist. He rails against the elites in speeches, and yet he's the son of a banker, went to Stanford and Yale and worked at one of the world's most elite law firms. He's even taught at one of the most fancy schmancy private schools in England. If you look up elite in the dictionary, there's a photo of Josh Hawley saying, why do you still own a dictionary? Are you too poor to buy a computer, you peon? And it's not just his background. Hawley's policies are also far from populist, despite what even some of his boosters on the left once claimed. Rather than support workers' rights and fair wages, he opposed pro-union legislation and minimum wage hikes. Hawley has also been hailed as a tech crusader, a tech reformer, for teaming up with, among others, Senator Elizabeth Warren against Twitter and Facebook. But he's not trying to bust their monopoly power on principle, he just wants to punish tech companies for allegedly having a liberal bias, even jumping on the right-wing bandwagon. To call on Elon Musk last year to conduct a public audit of Twitter's alleged censorship practices towards conservatives. There's no empirical evidence for that, by the way. So even though I was ahead of the curve, the whole world came to realize Josh Hawley's epic fraud on January the 6th, because this is what he did on the morning of that day, raising his fist infamously in solidarity with the mob outside the Capitol. But this is what he had to do that afternoon, running away when the crowd turned into rioters. This video was later revealed by the January 6th committee. Now, that moment has become the center of a new campaign ad released by Lucas Kuntz, a Democrat who has announced he will be running to try and unseat Hawley from the Senate in 2024. My name is Lucas Kuntz. I've done a lot of running in my life. Running to stay healthy. Running to fight for my country running to defend democracy. Oh, and by the way, that guy you're looking at, that's not me. That's our current U.S. Senator Josh Hawley, this guy. Or maybe you'd better recognize him running for his life a few hours later. I swear, this coward's always running from something. And now, this is the guy who's writing a book telling every single one of us how to be a man. Now this is me, Lucas Kuntz, running for Senate. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I did have the support of my community, which made me who I am today. When things get tough, Missourians deserve a U.S. Senator who will stand up for them, not run away. That's why I'm running to replace Josh Hawley, because we couldn't be more different. I'm Lucas Kuntz, and I approve this message because Josh Hawley is a fraud and a coward. And by the time I'm done with him, the whole world's going to know it. So keep on running, Josh. Keep on running. It is a great ad. Question, is it enough, though, for Coons to run away with the victory in a state Hawley won by six points last time round? Joining me now is Democratic Senate candidate from Missouri, Lucas Coons, who's looking to unseat Senator Josh Hawley. Uh, Lucas, thanks for coming on the show. You also ran in the Democratic primary for Senate last year in the race to replace GOP retiring Senator Roy Blunt, but you lost in that primary. Why should we believe you can win the Democratic nomination now and then go on to beat Josh Hawley? Well, you know, in American politics, money's basically everything, right? Money, connections, and all that. And we started a campaign, you know, my background, I come from no money, a working class neighborhood. My family went bankrupt when we were kids. Uh, we only made it because people around town passed the plate down at church for us, brought food by the house. And, you know, rather than becoming a career politician, I spent my life in the United States Marine Corps. I deployed to Iraq, leading a police training team there, deployed to Afghanistan twice, did arms control negotiations out of the Pentagon. A lot of things that aren't building up uh, for a U.S. Senate campaign. And so, you know, unlike Josh Hawley, whose dad was a banker, who went to all the fanciest everything, as you, as, you put, as you mentioned, went to one of the fanciest corporate law firms in the country, was supported by all the country club Republicans, I don't have that type of shortcut. I'm not an heir to any sort of fortune either. And so what we had to do is we spent that primary building up a grassroots fundraising operation and a bunch of support around the state. We did a great job. By the end, we had a record-breaking grassroots fundraising operation uh, that I'm proud to say is still in place. So everybody invested in that previous campaign, everyone who joined, everyone who was along for the ride, they're here for this one. And as far as beating Josh Hawley goes, telling you, man, everyone wants that fraud and coward out of the U.S. Senate. 
Missouri is the show me state. Like you got to show people who you are. And when he it's, ran last time, he hadn't shown everybody what he was yet. Now he's shown them all. He's a fraud and he's a coward. And you know, if any of us had run like that in Iraq, Iraq or Afghanistan, we'd have been court-martialed for, for cowardice, right? And so uh, it's what I'm talking about now is Missourians needing someone who will stand up for them. It's interesting you mentioned that, you know, they want him out, people want him out. Senator Hawley pumped his fist to encourage those rioters on January the 6th and voted to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Uh, the man clearly is a threat to democracy. Why do you think the Senate has never taken any action against him? He wasn't expelled when he really should have been, and there's been no real substantive... We haven't heard from any ethics committee investigation into him. I think what we're going to see is the people of Missouri take action against him. Again, like people here, they don't want a fraud and a coward representing them. They don't want someone who only cares about power for themselves. We've been betrayed by politicians like that over and over again. And, and you know, we launched our campaign on January 6th to remind everyone what he wants. It's just power for himself. And this is the reason why, right? He raises his fist when he thinks it's going to get himself some power. But the second things get real, He's skittering off and running for the exit. And uh, people are tired of that. They're tired of people like him trying to control them. And uh, that's going to be our path to victory. Lucas, you are a Democrat, of course. But within the Democratic Party, where do you see yourself? Are you on the quote unquote moderate wing, the quote unquote progressive wing? How would you describe your politics or ideology? Yeah, I don't really jam with the whole left right thing. For me, I'm a populist. For me, being a populist is taking power back for everyday people, like the ones who took care of our family when we went bankrupt growing up. And so uh, I just want to change power for everybody. I don't look at it as a left right campaign. I look at it as a top bottom campaign for all of us who've been left behind. And, uh, you know, that's where Missourians are. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's get specific then. Let me just ask you some questions, some very brief yes or no questions. Do you support Medicare for all? I support getting universal health care. I think there's a lot of paths to get there. Do you support a Green New Deal? So what I want to do here is I want to invest in the next generation of energy and a lot of manufacturing here in America and Missouri where we've been left behind. It doesn't exactly jive with that. Uh, but what people want here is new manufacturing jobs and independence from uh, foreign energy. You know, right now we're relying on Saudis and Russians. And uh, I'm worried with the future of, of the way energy is going, we're going to be relying on Russia or on China which is bad for national security. And raising the minimum wage? Absolutely, yes. And where do you stand on eliminating the filibuster? You know, just to go back to minimum wage, you know, the people of Missouri, we increased the minimum wage $5 over the federal level. It's a good example of how we're trying to claw power back. And, uh, yeah, I think we should get rid of the filibuster. It's a way that the status quo, the people who buy off politicians, only have to buy off fewer and fewer in order to get what they want and uh, leave the rest of us behind. The Senate, as a body, has a lot of power when it comes to foreign policy and foreign affairs. Uh, you have uh, kind of pitched yourself as a Marine veteran. You mentioned working in the Pentagon. Uh, you've also been a critic of our wars, the, some of the wars that you had to participate in, including Afghanistan. You and I have spoken about Afghanistan before. You've said in the past that the best way to win a war is not to have one. How would you advance that strategy in the Senate? Yeah, what I want to do is invest in American independence, Western independence and energy. Uh, you know, when I went to war in Iraq, that was war for oil. We spent $6.4 trillion in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what did we get for it? You know, a couple multinational corporations uh, made out pretty well, and the rest of us got nothing. If we had spent that money investing in the next generation of energy, we'd be making all our solar panels. We'd have tech that doesn't even exist right now because we would have put that money towards something useful. And, you know, I hear people like Josh Hawley talk all the time about how we need more troops in, in Asia, more troops in the Pacific. We need to gear up for a war in the Pacific. Like, the way we prevent a war in the Pacific, which is the most important thing, is to invest here, get energy independence, get in independence on semiconductor production and all these other things so that we're not stuck in a situation where we're fighting a war for resources. Like, that's 20th yeah. century. Let's get into the 21st century.